without doubt, one of the biggest animals at the zoo and one of the biggest hits are our polar bears. They're a species that's endangered in the wild and zoos are working hard to try to get people to understand what it'll take to protect them long term. Some of that involves captive breeding. I'm here with Dr. Aaron Curry, who's an endocrinologist at our Crew Center, the Center for Conservation and Research of Endangered Wildlife. And you've been working with polar bears for years. Tell us some of what you're doing. Um, one of our biggest challenges is studying polar bear reproduction. They're very difficult to study in the wild because they travel so far in such um, long distances. We can't collect serial samples from them. And polar bears in captivity are great models in which to study their wild cousins. Um, so Inanna arrived here from the Buffalo Zoo as a recommendation from the Species Survival Plan, the Polar Bear Species Survival Plan. And um, Little One, our male, is a genetically valuable individual. He's never produced offspring, whereas Inanna is a proven breeder, so she's had cubs in the past. So the Species Survival Plan thought it was a great idea to put these bears together who are a good genetic match, and we're hoping that they'll um, hit it off in the springtime, and hopefully Inanna will get pregnant and have cubs um, this time next year. Now this is great. So we haven't had a new polar bear in quite a while, and of course we haven't had babies in a long time. Um, but it's still complicated, isn't it? I mean, we can't just say, okay, throw these two polar bears together. So is it a step-by-step -step thing? Or it is. So they'll be introduced to each other in roughly three weeks. And they can already smell each other. Polar yeah. bears have great senses of smell. So little one, our male, is already quite interested yeah. in, a, in the new arrival. Um, so they'll actually meet face-to-face -face in about three weeks. Um, breeding season in polar bears is in March and April. So mm -hmm. we'll expect to see some breeding behavior around that yeah. time. Yeah. Um, and polar bears have a very interesting and unique pregnancy. So if an embryo forms as a result mm -hmm. of that breeding, it'll enter a stage of embryonic diapause or delayed implantation. So it'll grow to about a 400 cell stage, tiny grain of sand, and it'll float around in the uterus mm. for just a few months. For the summer months, it stops growing completely. Um, and then as the day length gets shorter, the embryo will implant in the uterine wall, and the true gestation um, is about 60 days. So the same as a cow or a dog. So even though a polar bear is pregnant for a total of about eight or nine months, that fetus is actually only growing for the last 60 days of pregnancy, which is quite a unique phenomenon um, in mammals. Yeah, that's and a lot to manage if you're trying the keepers to manage her and mm -hmm. make sure it's, it's wild. But. Yeah. So one of our goals is actually to train her for ultrasound. Um, we had our previous bear, Barrett, trained to present her tummy to the to a protective mesh, and we could then pass an ultrasound probe through the mesh um, to see if we could find a fetus in there. Um, of course, we couldn't with Barrett because she never became pregnant, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, but we're hoping Anon is a, she is a very smart bear and she's very trainable and mm -hmm. she works for peanut butter, it seems. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping that we'll be able to train her to do the same behaviors as Barrett to present her belly so that maybe we can diagnose a pregnancy mm -hmm. um, early next fall. No, wait a minute. So a, a, say it's an elephant and you've got a baby that's a couple hundred pounds. It's a rhino, you've got a baby that's over a hundred pounds. Here's this great big bear with thick hair, mm -hmm. thick fat, and the baby's like this big, mm -hmm. right? So is it sensitive enough to see it in there? It should be, yeah. And no one's ever done it before. So if we diagnose a polar bear pregnancy, we will be the first. Um, but I think, I think we can, there's definitely a good chance yeah. we can do it here. Yeah, but like you said, their cubs, they're only about one to two pounds when they're born. So it's the, it's the largest um, difference in maternal to fetal weight ratio um, of any mammal species. Oh my gosh. There aren't very many baby polar no, bears there, born in there are zoos. only about two to four cubs born per year in all of North American zoos. Polar bears are a very important animal. They're important for their symbol of the Arctic and wilderness, and unfortunately they are endangered. Having them here at the zoo is a way to inspire people to get involved with conservation. We haven't had a baby polar bear born at the Cincinnati Zoo since 1989, so hopefully Dr. Curry's work and the good work of our new bear, Anana, will get some in 2017. <laughs>